بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is unit 4 writing so today we'll be learning much about uh, writing but before we jump to our lesson if you remember our previous uh, lesson the speaking uh, we took some questions here to work in pairs to name uh, two Olympic medalists from Saudi Arabia uh, which sports did they compete in and are these sports popular in our country so of course you did this with your colleague and we have to research and collect information about popular sports to make notes in the also the chart this is the chart of course if you remember we did it in the previous lesson the name of the sport is it individual or team sport some of them are both just like tennis and maybe swimming how and where uh, it is played what's the objective and why is it uh, or why it is uh, popular of course we've answered all of these and you can put your own answer of course it's, it doesn't have to be my answer you can choose uh, whatever sport you want and fill the chart uh, yourself so these are today's objectives to analyze a text to its main points label each part of the plan organize activity steps write notes about the sport demonstrate an understanding of a text um, infer the important information from a text use the appropriate words or phrases as headings demonstrate an understanding of how to write an email so today these are objectives and we'll be doing them all so do you know uh, do you know how ice hockey is played of course you can see this picture I think you know the sport here yes it's hockey or ice hockey it's famous in uh, maybe Canada and also uh, Norway where uh, the countries that they have the uh, cold weather throughout the year do you know how ice hockey is played look at the picture and guess so try to guess how is it played when they play hockey what do they do when they are skating throughout the rink what do they do there you can see in the picture here they're carrying some sticks and they're chasing a, a black object here and there's in the background you can see there's a net or a goal so I think now we can come up with something that they're trying to hit this object and get it through the net compare ideas information in the class so I think it's obvious from the picture here maybe what's the main uh, what's the main goal of hockey is just to stick this object using the stick of course in the uh, uh, in the others te in the other teams net so number one read the first part of the text and label the different parts of the ice hockey rink your team is on the left your team is on the left so we'll be reading the first part of the text and to label the different parts of the ice hockey rink as you can see here this is the ice hockey uh, rink and your team is on the left and you have the places of the players here one two three four five and six so we'll be writing each of the places each of the positions here we'll be learning all of that just from the, the this first paragraph so let's listen to it together ice hockey is played on a rink that is 200 feet 61 meters long and 85 feet 26 meters wide with painted lines to indicate various zones the area behind the blue line of a team's side is called its defending zone the area behind the opponent's blue line is the attacking zone and the area between the two blue lines is the neutral zone there are two sets of goal posts at either end of the rink with a net attached behind them the red line between the two posts is the goal line the area in front of the goal is called the crease so now that we have finished listening to the first part I think you can guess what each position here and there's the one already done for you number two you can see number two uh, here this is the defending zone because this is your your team is on the left this is your area so here you have to defend your 
goal. So number two is the defending zone. What about number one? What's the position here? I think it's an obvious answer. It's the goal post. This is your goal here. This is the goal post. What about number three? You can see that here. It's here in the middle. So number three is, yes, the neutral zone. The neutral zone. So it's not your, uh, it's not your place or the opponent's place. It's just in the middle. So this is neutral uh, zone. Number, five, number four here. Number four is the attacking zone. So number four is the attacking zone. Number five, what's number five there, right there in the corner? You can see it. This is the goal line. So this is here, number five, as you can see. This is the goal line. Number six, right in front of your opponent's goal. What, the, what is it called? So it's the crease, the crease. So as said in the last line here, the area in front of the goal is called the crease. Of course, in the opponent's goal, not your goal, the opponent's goal. The area in front of your goal is called the goal post. So number two here, read and find out, then discuss, compare answers in class. So we'll be reading the whole article. But first, let's read these questions to answer them afterwards. How many players does each team have? What kind of players are they? Is it like football, 11 players in a team? Let's see. What is the objective of the game? What do you do? What's the objective? What kind of equipment do players use? I think we discussed this earlier, the equipment, maybe the sticks. Maybe we'll see more. We don't know. What is allowed and what is not allowed? The rules. What is allowed, what is not allowed? What are body checks? Why are they used? So there's something called body, uh, body checks. What are they and why are they used? How does the puck move? How does the puck move? How long are penalties? How does the puck move? The puck, of course, is the black round object that they try to move and how long are penalties so these are the questions we'll be I'll be playing the article now so let's uh, listen and try to come up with the answer from the article so let's listen together ice hockey is played on a rink that is 200 feet 61 meters long and 85 feet 26 meters wide with painted lines to indicate various zones the area behind the blue line of a team's side is called its defending zone. The area behind the opponent's blue line is the attacking zone, and the area between the two blue lines is the neutral zone. There are two sets of goal posts at either end of the rink with a net attached behind them. The red line between the two posts is the goal line. The area in front of the goal is called the crease. Each team has three kinds of players, three forwards, the center and two wingers, two defensemen, and a goaltender. The objective of the game is to score goals by shooting the puck, a hard rubber disc, into the opponent's net. The players control the puck with a long stick curved at one end. They also wear a lot of padding and helmets to avoid getting hurt. So I think you got a lot of information just from these three parts of the article. Uh, I think the first uh, part we've already uh, is already done the uh, the positions of the uh, players. Number two, each team has three kinds of players: three forwards, two defensemen, and a goaltender. So I think now we know how many players. The objective of the game is to score goals by shooting the puck. So I think we've answered just from this uh, part of the article many questions that were. Uh, asked previously. Let's continue the article here. Four, five, and six. Players are not allowed to use their hands in order to redirect the puck nor pass it to their teammates, unless they are in the defensive zone. They may redirect the puck with any other part of their bodies, but not kick it. The boards surrounding the ice keep the puck in the rink and are used to body check. Opponents, i.e. push them against the boards in order to stop their progress. 
Play can also be stopped if a goal is knocked out of position. It is then restarted with a face-off, i.e. two players face each other on the ice and try to gain control of the puck that an official drops to the ice. If an offensive player interferes with a goaltender's defense he is given a penalty and sent to the penalty box for two to five minutes. So now that we have listened to the article, let's answer uh, the questions. Uh, number one, how many players does each team have? What kind of players are they? So, the number of the players and what kind of players are they? I think you can find that in the second or the third part of the article. So, let's see the answer here together. Each team has six players, so the total is six players, a team, three forwards, two defensemen, and a goal tender. Again, six players. What kind of players are they? Three forwards, two defensemen, and a goal tender. What is the objective of the game? What's the objective of the game? The reason? What's the objective? What do you do? What's your goal here? So. The objective of the game is to score goals by shooting the puck into the opponent's net. So it's as we guessed in the beginning of this lesson when we analyzed the picture is you use your stick to hit the puck, the uh, circular or the round object to get it in the opponent's net. So this is the objective of the game. Again, the objective of the game is to score goals. How? by shooting the puck into the opponent's net. The uh, next question, what kind of equipment do players use? So the equipment during playing. So what do they use? I think this is an easy one. Players use a stick, a helmet, and a padding to avoid getting hurt. So you, they use the uh, stick, of course, to move the puck, a helmet, for protection and al also they use paddings on their uh, arms uh, and maybe the entire body. Why? To avoid getting hurt because maybe they will be hitting each other all the time. So stick, helmet and a padding to avoid uh, getting hurt. Next question, what is allowed and what is not allowed? So this, these are the rules here. So the correct answer, players are not allowed to use their hands in order to redirect the puck unless they are in the defensive zone. So you don't use your hands, it's not allowed unless you are in the defensive zone. They may redirect it with any other part of their body, but not kick it. You can redirect it with any, uh, 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 you can re redirect it with any part of your body, uh, but not kick it. What are body checks? Why are they used? So I think you've heard the term body checks. What are body checks and why are they used? So the answer is body checks are moves that involve pushing opponents against the boards that surround the rink. So body checks are moves that involve pushing opponents against the boards that surround the rink. How does the puck move? So the puck, the round object, how does it move? Using what? So let's see the answer here. The puck is pushed with a stick by players towards the opponent's net or redirected with the player's bodies but neither kicked or pushed by hand. So you can use a stick or any part of your body, but not kick it or using your hand. So the puck is pushed with a stick by players towards the opponent's net or redirected just to redirect with the player's bodies, but neither kick it nor pushed by hand. How long are penalties? If there's a penalty, how long is the penalty? So it's just for two, uh, from two to five minutes. How long are penalties? Two to five minutes. I think you can find this in the last of the, in the, uh, in the ending of the article. Three here, use the appropriate words or phrases as headings. 
So we have six parts of the articles and we have to put the correct heading in each, uh, in each uh, uh, one of them. So it's like a small title for each of, uh, part of the article. We have penalties, moving the puck, equipment, players, stopping the game and the rink. So let's listen to the first three, then we will decide which is which. Ice hockey is played on a rink that is 200 feet, 61 meters, long and 85 feet, 26 meters, wide with painted lines to indicate various zones. The area behind the blue line of a team's side is called its defending zone. The area behind the opponent's blue line is the attacking zone, and the area between the two blue lines is the neutral zone. There are two sets of goal posts at either end of the rink with a net attached behind them. The red line between the two posts is the goal line. The area in front of the goal is called the crease. Each team has three kinds of players, three forwards, the center and two wingers, two defensemen, and a goaltender. The objective of the game is to score goals by shooting the puck, a hard rubber disc, into the opponent's net. The players control the puck with a long stick curved at one end. They also wear a lot of padding and helmets to avoid getting hurt. So the first three parts of the article. Number one, what's the correct heading here from the box? So let's see the answer here. It's the rink because it's talking about the rink and each position in the rink. What is it called? Number two is the players because it's talking about players. How many are there and what, uh, what, do, what are they called? There are three forwards, two defensemen and a goaltender. What about number three here? The objective of the game. This is the equipment using the puck the stick, the helmet, the paddings, so these are the equipments. So number four, five, and six, let's listen to this part of the article, then we will be answering each heading. Players are not allowed to use their hands in order to redirect the puck nor pass it to their teammates, unless they are in the defensive zone. They may redirect the puck with any other part of their bodies, but not kick it. The boards surrounding the ice keep the puck in the rink and are used to body check. Opponents, i.e. push them against the boards in order to stop their progress. Play can also be stopped if a goal is knocked out of position. It is then restarted with a face-off, i.e. two players face each other on the ice and try to gain control of the puck that an official drops to the ice. If an offensive player interferes with a goaltender's defense he is given a penalty and sent to the penalty box for two to five minutes. So, heading number four, players are not allowed to use their hands, so the rules here. So, number four is moving the puck. How do you move the puck using your hand, your, uh, is it by kicking it or using the stick? Number five, so what's the correct heading here? Stopping the game, stopping the game because it says here the board surrounding the ice keep the puck in the rink and are used to body check opponents, push them against the boards in order to stop their prog uh, progress. So this is stopping the game. What about number six? I think this is an obvious one. Of course it's talking about penalties. In, if an offensive player interferes with the goaltender's defense, he is giving a penalty and sent to the penalty box for two to five minutes. Excellent. Exercise B here, choose a sport for or a recreational activity that you like doing. Think about the sport or activity and make notes in the chart. Add more steps or stages if necessary. Use your notes to write an email to your friend giving information about your sport or recreational activity. So this is the chart. You have to fill name of sport or recreational activity. Where can you do this activity or sport? When can you do this activity? For example, uh, uh, summer and winter, etc. 
Do you need any special equipment to take part in this activity? Just like hockey, do you need a stick, a, a helmet? What do you have to do to prepare for this activity? What is involved in doing the activity? As in uh, stages, the rules, etc. Why do you like this activity? Would you recommend this sport or activity to your friends and why? So you have to fill this uh, chart using a sport or activity. For example, I chose football. Where can you play, where can you do this activity? In a pitch, of course. Or if you want to do it unprofessionally, you can play it uh, anywhere. When can you do this activity? Summer, winter, I can do it. We can play football at any time, day or night, summer or winter. Do you need any special equipment to take part in this activity? A ball and two goals. We don't need any special equipment, no sticks, no helmets. We just need a ball and two goals or two nets. Uh, what do you have to do to prepare for this activity? What is involved in doing this activity? The rules, for example. Of course, the team who score more goals wins. The team who score more goals wins. Why do you like this activity? Of course, we all find it fun and competitive and enthusiastic. We all like to play football, especially with our friends. And if, his, if they are in your team, of course, you'll be having lots of fun. Would you recommend this sport or activity to your friend? Of course, I would do. Why? Because it's really fun and it's a sport. This is the letter that you'll be writing. Uh, this is an example, of course. Hi, Majid. How's school? How's your family? I hope, you're, they are, I hope you are all well. You asked about fishing. Well, so they're talking about fishing here. Well, guess what? Last week I caught the biggest fish you've ever seen. Let me tell you how you can do it too. The first thing you need to do is prepare your line with bait. Then you can continue writing. I'm attaching a photo of, my, uh, of me fishing with my dad. We look good, huh? I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. Send me all your news soon. Your friend, Ali. So whatever sport you choose in the chart, you can write uh, the same exact letter as this one, just talking about the sport or recreational activity that you chose. Writing corner here, when you write an email to a friend giving news and instructions, so the writing corner here, when you write an email to a friend giving news and instructions. So you want to write an email to your friend giving him some instructions or some news. Greet and sign off the email uh, in an informal manner. Hi, hello, dear. So if he's your friend, don't use formal language. Of course, you'll be using informal language. So number one, greet and sign off when you enter and when you get out. Greet and sign off the email in an informal matter. For example, hi, hello, dear, and so on. Write, write as if you are speaking to your friend directly. It's uh, as is he, uh, if he is sitting or standing right in front of you. Give your news as in school, a recent activity you have taken up. So you give your news, what, uh, what did you do at school? Maybe a recent activity or a sport that you uh, have taken up. If the reader doesn't know the sport or activity, give details about what's involved and the stages and steps. So explain this activity to him. Hand over the first draft to someone else to read and comment on, edit and rewrite. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha anta astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.